I was recently asked if I could afford any combine, what would it be? That's a hypothetical situation. So if you're evaluating hypothetical situations, there's hypothetical answers because there's different hypothetical situations that you would harvest with it. Now, if you're asking what would work for our farm, my honest answer is none of the above. After evaluating almost all brands in the market, everybody has something, nobody has everything. There's pros and cons in nearly every brand make a model. I currently have a 2015 John Deere S680 combine. This was the final tier four version before they came out with the S700 series, which the 700 series are essentially the exact same machine with a technology upgrade. When they upgraded the technology, they also upgraded the seat and console, which those technology packages allowed that machine to operate the newer heads, have better data tracking, and the new consoles much more user-friendly. And I'll have more information on a separate video about the 600 to 700 series upgrades, as well as the differences in the 700 series combines. You guys are getting a bit of a piece together video here. And I was more into looking at the machine than I was shooting the actual video, so I apologize for the jittery filming and cut up narration. There's something wrong with the mic on this app. Anyway, you're looking at a X9 1000, which is a smaller uh, X9. It had the 1446 uh, Titan tires on it, which are the ones you've seen all over the internet, being advertised on, I think, the Welkers and I believe Cola Cornstar. They're using some influential channels to move their new product, which is that new tire. So the X9 has a lot of updates on it. Um, some things are the same old BS, like that right-hand chain. It is a much upgraded chain. It's a lot heavier, and the feeder house is huge. It's amazingly huge. But other things remain the same on the machine. Uh, 790, there comes my helper, but a 790 versus an X9 1000, there's not a huge cost increase and not what everybody thinks there is anyway and i think for the price difference especially if you're going to lease one it'd be a no-brainer to go with the x9 1000 over a s790 and that's just because that has new technology on it and new features that make the machine handier such as the upgraded stairway there which still needed improvement at some point i'll do a complete review on the X9 showing the differences between it and the 700 series and what my overall thoughts on it are. This was the second X9 I'd looked at. And you'll be seeing clips from the first X9 I looked at here in a couple seconds. The X9 does have a majorly improved cab interior. It's the same cab but they got a new shell, new headliner, and new body panels inside. And you'll see that here in the still frame pictures. And here's the, the first one I looked at, and it was on duels, and they're very, very heavy duels. I believe three quarters inch thick plate. And there's the belt drives. They, they eliminated all the chains, went to a lot of belt drives on it. I really do like the cab. I like the machine in general. I still think it could be built a lot better. And if I had the ability to go engineer the machine, it would not be what they built. But for what's available on the market, if I had the money, which our farm does not have the ability to buy a machine like this, but if I did and had the ability to go out and buy one or a new 790, it would be a no-brainer for us to go with the X9 1000 over the S790. Most companies run things in five-year builds in the S700 series combines at about the end of its five-year build cycle. Uh, it's still using the 13 5-liter engine, whereas they have the 13.6 and just about everything else now. And they have the new cab interior, and like I said, those are the same cabs, so you know John Deere is not going to continue to build two cabs. And by the way, I sure like the way the side folded down on this. That was a lot better, the way you get there to fuel at X9 was just a single flop down side uh, sheet. That was, that's a lot handier. But anyway, my prediction for John Deere, because of the engines and the cabs, and just some things that they're doing on the X9, I... I don't know what it'll be. It'll be a re revised 700 or it'll be like a X8 series, something like that. But you know good and well that they're going to have a new series out here in the next year to two years. And it'll be more of a match to the X9 combine. It'll have new body panels and everything on it. So you guys can just mark this as your calendar date. Uh, that I, I called it here first to, to what's coming. But anyway, you're looking at the X9 interior here now. It's it's improved. It's definitely improved. So like I said, they won't they won't continue building two models. They're they're gonna come out with a new one here real soon.
I'm sure. So if anybody's wanting to order a new S700 for next fall, you're probably better off to wait. They'll have a new model out. And they have had troubles with that 13 5 liter engine. They're just using up their supply. Uh, that 13.6 has improved, which is now used in the four wheel drives, combines, some choppers, other things. So when that new model hits the ground, maybe that would be a good model for us and our farm. Uh, I just think that the new machines are priced out of what I feel comfortable spending right now. So we're looking at other options, which sometimes you go older and you're a little more screwed. And there was a uh, 1066 there. I had to stop and look at because it, it was absolutely picture perfect. Since I'm in the search for combines and I'm looking at all brands, I was going to do a video series on them. I had to stop and I had to take video footage of it. There's a Gleaner Super Series that's an 88. I believe the new ones are 9 series and that was an 8 series, the biggest of the 8 series. So that'd be a 98 now, which I think the 98s had new cabs and some other things on them. I'm not super up to par on the Gleaners. And no, I won't be buying one. I mean, dealers are just way too far away for us and there's just none in our area. And honestly, I don't see what's so wonderful about it. I, I, they talk about how easy they are to work on. I get comments all the time talking about the Massey Ferguson was the best combine. It, it, it wasn't clearly because it's not even made anymore. I get, I get all these comments all the time. Gleaner, oh my God, Gleaner, you gotta have a Gleaner. I really don't know why. I mean, honestly, anybody saying that, as I said when I started the video, there's no perfect brand, but I really, really don't feel the Gleaners by any means, even one of the major contenders. I found it hard to work on. They still use a steel body. Uh, things on it were pretty light duty. Feeder house chains light duty, and you got that offset little narrow feeder house chains excessively long. Uh, I'd like to know what happens if you send a big old slug that you can hardly get through a 40 foot head up through that little tiny narrow feeder house. I mean, we plug the opening on our feeder house as it is now in our area, so I'd like to know what happens if you have one that's half as wide. And maybe they handle it fine. I don't know. And I'm not going to find out because I have no interest in buying one i just i don't like anything about them i don't like i got to flip the holder in compartment wide open to get in there to check the engine the sieves yeah that chopper there or the slinger i should say you have to open that up so you can walk up in there it's on a hinge it just seems like everything about the machines is kind of a big pain in the butt i will have some more videos on other brands coming up in the future if you pull the case i h up the next to one of these things and I, I really I just can't see it, guys. I just absolutely cannot see why anybody features-wise, the drives-wise, it isn't there. It just isn't there. The machine has a piss-poor resale. Uh, they're not that easy to work on. They have small light-duty belts. They have smaller bearings than anybody else. So I just I just don't know what the, the gleaner following is and i'm i'm open for any brand i'm normally pretty biased towards john deere but on a combine i'm open for any brand but honestly i kind of lean towards the case machine or probably john deere just for service but i really like the case machine maybe even look at a new holland and i tried to get a new holland out here on a demo the problem is that they're not able to get me a machine just because this covid mess is going on right now um i could demo a gleaner but i have absolutely no interest in buying it and there's that fear i was saying those slats and you can see they're all matched in by rocks they're just they're very very light duty whereas John Deere uses a bigger heavier cast slat the only thing I can really see is they're really awesome on a gleaner is they have a full continuous wrap rotor concave and it gives a lot of separating and uh, grading area so anyway at least I was able to check out the x9s and at least I was able to see a silver cedar get you guys a little bit of footage and I'll continue on looking at other brands and try to maybe do a little better job of filming. Because like I say, I'm there to see the machine, not just not just film. Anyway, stay tuned for the rest of those videos coming up, as well as more farm content and harvest footage. As far as the combine search, I kind of feel like it's looking for a unicorn. Uh, it's just, again, there's no perfect brand. And I really wish somebody would just rethink the wheel and come out with something just jaw-dropping. But yes, it could be done quite easily.